you Lord, wave your hands and say thank you Lord. What you need is the grace of God. The grace of God will make all the difference in your life. Lord, I need your grace. The grace of a Christian. The grace of a Christian woman. Open your mouth loud and talk to Jesus. Let him give you his grace. Let him give you his grace. Let him give you his grace. Viewers all over the world, you need the grace of a Christian. You need the grace of a Christian woman. Ask the Lord to give you his grace. As a ministry, I'm praying for you. Ask the Lord to give you his grace. And your life will take a change. It will not be the same again in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. I want to speak now to the viewers. Wherever you are, receive from the grace of God in Jesus' name. As I shall be ministering to you, I'm praying for you. Distance is my barrier. Wherever you are, receive from the grace of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus Hallelujah. Everybody is concerned. The grace of everybody, an official, a civil servant, a government worker, a businessman, a footballer, whoever you are, the grace of a child of God. That is what the Lord wants to talk to you this moment. As the Holy Spirit shall be speaking through me. James chapter 4 verse 7. I read. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and the devil will flee from you. Listen to me, people of God and viewers all over the world. What does it mean to submit yourself to God Resist the devil and he will flee from you. This means no one, no one, nobody on earth, nobody can survive Satan's influence without submitting to God. The Bible didn't say the devil will not pursue a Christian. The Bible Say Satan will not trouble a believer. The Bible went further to speak to a Christian that submit to God, hide under God. It never ended with submit to God, resist the devil. It means there is a pressure the whole creation is facing from Satan. Resist the devil. Submit to God. Resist the devil and he will leave you. It means Satan will only leave what has hidden in God. Am I speaking to you? When we talk of grace of a believer, we start here now. Satan will only leave what has hidden in God. Whatever has not taken shelter under God's mighty hand, Satan will not leave that thing. Think about it. This is the word of the Lord. Submit to God. Resist. Resist. Think about it. Submit to God. Resist. It means if this is God, the Bible doesn't say God should submit to me. No. In that James 4, 7, we read verse 8, 9, and 10. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Are you seeing something? Come 
near to God and you will discover that more of God will come closer to your life. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands. The Bible did not say God should wash his hands. It's us. Wash your hands. You sinners. And purify your hearts. You double-minded person. Purify your heart. You should have one mind. That one mind means it is all about God. That is life for a Christian. It is all about Jesus. It is all about God. Wash your hands. You sinner. It means what are you doing which does not please God? Stop it. Wash your hands. Stop that thing. If you don't stop it, Satan will never what? Leave you. Satan will hold you. At any level he may hold you. To be alive doesn't mean you are free from Satan. For the Bible says, for there is a way that seemeth right to a man. But the end thereof is the way of destruction. So there are many people who are alive, but in the hands of Satan. And they are busy moving in Satan. Satan is controlling them. Satan is feeding them. Satan is energizing them. Paul spoke to Timothy. He says in the last days, many will go worse and worse. Out. Many will deceive others and they themselves will be what? Deceived. They will go worse and worse. He said, but you remain in what you have learned. It means Satan will take hold of people. Satan will feed them and they are full. Who tell you a sinner is not satisfied? Those who are sinning, go around, you will see what people are doing. They eat, they enjoy, and they feel like they are fine. Satan is feeding them. And they are full. As God has to feed you a Christian, Satan to does feed those he controls. As God has to bless you, Satan to does what? Blesses those he controls. You can be rich in God and you can be equally rich in who? Satan. Look at those who are sinning all over the world. One, most of the mightiest and greatest people in the world are those who Satan is influencing. But you see them, they are still there. Submit yourself to the Lord. Resist Satan and he will leave you. But say, come near to God and he will come near to you. We love him because he first loved us. Now is our turn. What is the effort you are making to go to God? This is the grace you need. Listen to me well. The grace of a Christian woman, the grace of a Christian. The grace of a servant of God, the grace of a youth, a man whatsoever. What is that force you have discovered is within you that pushes you to love God more, to go more closer to God, to do the things that please God. That is what I am preaching now. That is grace. You need that force. That force that pushes you to do what is not correct. You need to be delivered from that one. You instead need now to be impacted with the force that pushes you to do better work, please God. The things I want to do, I find myself not to them. That shows you need deliverance. I did not want to insult her. I did not want to insult him, but I don't know what came over me. Before I realized, I told him off. Anyway, I'm sorry. Eh? If you see her acting like that, it's because I guess on anger way when I vex it, you need deliverance. That spirit has to leave you. It, it, it must not influence you. If you submit to God, that spirit will leave you and you will change. The solution is to submit. You have a role to play. What is your effort? Or what is that force that you 
you have seen walking within you. Look at me. Viewers all over the world, look at me. You see this Tabuli church, film it well, film it. This is where I spend most of my day. Every Christian in this church, you are aware. I sleep here on this carpet. I sleep here. What will make me sleep inside this type of place? I am making an effort to go close to God. Second, I've discovered there is a force within me that forces me to seek God. Even if it means to leave my comfortable house and go in discomfort. It is not a matter of refusing to enjoy. No, it's a matter of God tracking you to himself. Whatever you do, whether in richness, whether in poverty, let it be defined that the force of God is dragging you to do better. What pleases God? If you are rich, take the Jeep. It is an expensive car. Let that Jeep be ruled by a force. You and that your Jeep. And all is that you should be able to discover that you and that Jeep are always directed in what places? Period. It is God who blesses us to enjoy. But we enjoy in Him. In Him we live, in Him we move, in Him we have our being. But once you discover that anything is dragging you from coming closer to God, watch out. The Bible says God does not tempt anyone to sin. For if anyone sins, that person is being drawn by his own word, desires. And when desire grows, it results to sin. You are a human being. I'm a human being. We are human beings. Watch out with your desires. You may have desires coming in you, which is from Satan. It's not from God. God will never tempt you to sin. That desire coming in you, which makes you end up doing what does not please God, it is never from God. That desire is from Satan. You should be able to know what it means to live as a Christian, as a Christian woman, as a Christian man. When you are able to know that, you will be a person directed by God. The choices of your friends will be directed by God. The way you do with people will be directed by God. Because there is a force that is controlling you, dragging you closer to God. There is a force. So, if you are directed by God, you can choose to love God. And God will give you more of his love. Listen, draw close to God and he will draw close to you. When you make an effort, God will multiply it. Tell somebody, say when you make an effort, God will multiply it. Say when you make an effort, God will multiply it. That is why Jesus encouraged us by saying, if you have faith, as small as a mustard seed, I'm telling you mysteries now. You might have never known the real interpretation of that scripture. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, Jesus Christ simply meant make an effort to walk with God and God will multiply. Make an effort to love God. You will see now that you will not be loving him again by your strength alone. His strength will be your sufficiency. Make an effort to pray. The Holy Spirit will come now to quicken you to pray the more. Make an effort to knock. God will come and open the door. Make an effort to seek. He will show you himself. With God, we must make an effort. That kind of knowledge of grace which tells people that be you the way you want to be is not your own, it is God, it's not real grace because it leaves people in Satan's control. It leaves people in the fallen nature of man. Draw close to God 
and God will draw close to you. Listen, it means if this is God and you are here, if you must walk with God, think with God, reason with God, you must make an effort. He wants to see your effort. When you make your effort, that effort is genuine willingness. It shows the sincerity of your heart. And God now will what? Respond. He will come to you. That is why he says he will keep on knocking. The door will be open for him. He will keep on asking. That person you will receive. He will keep on seeking. That person you will find. God needs people who are ready to make an effort and a genuine willingness. For you to have the grace of the Christian woman, the grace of the Christian, you will not see it in the desires of the world and you imagine that in a small, small, one day God will change me. You may die without being changed. In my generation, I have seen people who have died and some are still dying and they ended up not doing the will of God. The way they were alive, there were a lot of things you heard them say, but they ended up not able to do it. Why? Satan is the cause. You must submit to God and you resist Satan. If you don't make an effort to submit to God, Satan, I tell you the truth, he will never leave you. Never. You go west, you go east, Satan will hold you. That is why for me to make a difference with God in my generation and in my ministry, I must be able to teach you to love God. That is where the difference will be made in my ministry. Because as you are seated here, you have gone to all churches in this way. So what can prove a difference? It's not now church. Mm -mm. Where do we have more of God? That's the difference now. More of God will make a difference. It's not about, I'm um, here, yeah, um, mm, that one means nothing. Because many people have come here for the first time and they were delivered there. Is it true? So, the, the key now and the secret is that, more of God. People might have been failing in your family. People might have been failing in business. It doesn't mean you will fail. You can make a difference by drawing closer to God. The Satan who helped that person and made that person fail, in your own case, you will succeed. Amen. The battles that person faces, you too will face the battles. But the decision you will take will make a difference. Many people take wrong decisions. Let me tell you, in life, eh, why will God judge? And the Bible says God does not discriminate. What comes to you is equal to you. Mark what I'm saying. The day you die, God will judge you by what he allowed to come to your life. Now, you will not tell God, Father, I was the most persecuted. So please forgive me for my reactions. I was persecuted to the level that I could not bear it. Lord, I know I did sin. Father, forgive me. There's nothing like that. He will tell you that when that persecution came, I, God, expected you to resist it. God gives everybody the grace that you need. Get what I've said. If you are a president of the nation, you will receive the grace that that chair demands. To be able to receive insults from people all over the world. You know what big people receive? Every Jack and Jill write rubbish on the internet. God will judge us by our response to life. Not by our excuses to the situations that came to us. Say, so God will judge us by our response to life, our decisions in life, 
and not by the difficulties that met us or the obstacles that challenged us. Yes. Many people go out of God and enter into Satan's way. Do you know why? Let me use myself as an example. I'm a pastor. I'm a growing pastor. I have a small church. Let me humbly say so. Because I'm trusting God for the best. There are many people who will tell me that, man of God, church may grow. Ministry may grow. I want to teach you. If you want me to go, do so. Do so. Do like this. Put your foot so. Do like that. Do like this. Why are these advices coming to me? These advices are trying to make me know that succeed. You have to what? Succeed. Now, how do I succeed? Submit to God. Resist the devil. Yet, yeah, he will leave you alone. So, no matter the advice you give me, I should be able to make the right decision for my success. The knowledge of my success is that God has to deliver me. God has to remove Satan from my life and he blesses me and I succeed. But any success that will promise you of instant entry into Satan's hand, I will tell you, you will enjoy now, you will cry after. That is not success. For you to receive the grace of God, you must submit to God and you stand in direct opposition to Satan. So nobody who has true grace is weak in battle. Tell your neighbor, say nobody who has found true grace is weak in battle. Because if you want to submit to God, you receive what? More of God. More of his salvation. More of his holiness. Not so. More of his righteousness. More of his truth. More of his faithfulness. More of love. More of everything. As you receive that more of everything, it means the more you are to grow spiritual, to receive more of holiness, to become more righteous, more faithful, more loving, more truthful, it is because you are in direct resistance to all. Satan, listen to me, this is God, submit to God, resist the devil, Satan go, and he will flee. He will flee by your consistency. The day you leave your submission to God, and you start, hey, I enjoy small. <laughs> you are in danger because where you are standing is not your zone. Say, neighbor, where you are standing is not your zone. Say, that will say, ha! He don't come for you. He just sent him on straight. Meet him! Listen to me. If you think you are too wise, this is coming, coming, Christian. When Satan sent demons, demons are coming, and you want to run back to go to God. Satan will tell a demon, stand here. Block him. Let him not go close to God. Drag him up. When that demon is fighting with you, I'm telling you mysteries. If the demon sees that, you claim to love a particular thing about God. The demon will look at you. Satan will scan you. Where can we succeed to drag him back? If your weakness is the love of money, Satan will give that demon money. Propose him money. Are you hearing me? Propose him what? Money! And he will turn back. He will not go again to God. Demon may not appear to you physically to give you money, except his high dimension. It's human being that will give you money. The demon will bring somebody who is very rich <laughs> to come and give you money. And when that person is coming to give you money, that person will not tell you that, man of God, God has asked me to give you this money so that you should be more godly. He said, if that man gives you that 
money and it tells you about holiness, righteousness, you will take that money and you are loving God more. It means it's God who has blessed you. But to show you, it's Satan who has blessed you. Eh? Satan doesn't want you to be more holy, more righteous. That money will come with condition. Mark that. That condition will be to turn you back. Let's go. Let's do what? Let's go. The money is sweet. Let's go. And I want to tell you that those who prosper later in life, like he who loves best, love, he who loves last, love best, they have been going through battle. Get me again. Those who prosper later in life, like he who loves last, love best. They have just been going through what? Battle. Resisting Satan. I will not submit to you. I resist you out of my life. When Satan finally leaves them, I tell you, they get a reward from God. Fight the battle and emerge victorious. There is no way you can have more of God without fighting Satan. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. It means anyone who wants to submit himself genuinely to God must be a direct conflict with who? With who? With who? Okay. So you must be a woman of warfare. Am I talking to you now? You must be a man of Satan may be hitting your children, hitting your business, so that you give up in your faith. Whatever makes you give up in your faith is from Satan. Satan may challenge you in the ministry, so that man of God, I end up giving up. Whatever will make me give up is from Satan. Instead, we are called to submit to God. And Satan should go. When Satan go, you feel a godly environment. In your heart, in your home, in your marriage, in every way. When you are truly delivered, you will not be the same. Mark that. When you have been genuinely converted, you will leave the past things. You will now be going forward. The grace of a Christian, the grace of a Christian woman, the grace of a genuine servant of God, the grace of a child of God. Anyone who belongs to God, the grace you receive is that you receive the power of the Holy Spirit to disagree with Satan. Viewers all over the world, everybody you are hearing me, this message is coming to you from God. For you to go closer to God, you should be ready to fight Satan. Because Satan will never leave you submit to God without a fight. And for him to leave you, you will have to prove your resistance. You have to prove your what? And you know what it means? If you are fighting somebody who has power, to resist that person, you know what it means. It's a struggle. Open your Bible. It's a struggle. Ephesians 6. It's a struggle. Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 12. Let me read. Ephesians 6 verse 12. I read. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God. 13. So that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand, a true Christian will be at war with who? 
principalities, powers, authorities, rulers, powers of this dark world, spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. It means that whatever is good for your life, these things will fight it. Is marriage a good thing? They will fight it. Is career breakthrough a good thing for you to prosper? You become a star, you become great. What God has destined you as a Christian, you will never become so without a battle. Demons will fight you. Do you need promotion as a true Christian? As a true Christian? Or God powers will fight you. Members of your group who have Satan's power, Juju power, demon power. They will say, ah, huh? the one come off our side. Even as I'm standing here as a man of God, for the ministry to prosper and succeed, I know it will not happen without a battle. And what is that battle? Spiritual what? Battle. So my prayer has to increase. I have to go more closer to God. I have to submit to God. These women of faith will not stand the test of time without warfare. This means the woman leader, all the leaders, and all the women must be women of battle. Women who are spiritual, who know that for us to form a league of women, it will work without prayers. We need to war against Satan. We need to fight oppositions. You will see that if you want to draw closer to God, Satan will want to draw you further from God. And for Satan to leave you, you must resist. You must resist him. For you to resist him, there must be a fight. The Bible says our struggle as Christians is against rulers and authorities of darkness of this dark world god bless you thanks for watching this video please like and share don't forget to subscribe comment and rate us on our various social media pages go to our youtube page at paul ma ministries don't forget to like subscribe and to click on the notification bell to be the very first to receive truth revealing sermons from the man of god apostle paul ma that will strengthen your relationship and fellowship with jesus christ for your salvation healing deliverance breakthrough and all of god's wonderful blessings god bless you as you connect with us in jesus name we believe you have been blessed by the clip you have just watched from God's New Covenant Ministry. Stay connected for more faith-lifting teachings, deliverances, and testimonies of God's power to heal, to save, and to deliver. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God's New Covenant Ministry, life in Christ Jesus. Reaching you right where you are. Receive spiritual insights of the works and strategies of the enemy and to see how the mighty power of God brings them to nothing, go to our YouTube page at Paul M.E. Ministries. Don't forget to like, subscribe and to click on the notification bell to be the very first to receive our videos. God bless you as you connect with us in Jesus' name.